We're back to writing with a plan. I wrote in the chord names for the A section to help people follow along. I got a request for that, so here it is. Um, so last time we were working on the arrangement some more. And we've got this melody now, and we've put that melody on violin one right here. Then we've got our crotales doing our delay effect. And we've got the rest of the string quartet filling out the harmony. So here's what we have right now. Cool. And we have this piano line. And I feel like we need more of that piano line. We gotta finish out the phrase. So let me get that going. Bum 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 bum. Bum. And let's see. Let's try. About this, I'm gonna do outline the five, the three, the one, One thing you want to look out for is your lowest notes. You don't want to have a muddy low end when you're writing. Uh, you want the low end to be clear and easy for people to distinguish what's happening down there. And if you have too much stuff that is really close together in the low end, things start to get muddy. So if I have this A and then this A right next to each other and this F sharp <clears throat> holding over this A, I just gotta make sure that you can really hear what's going on and that they don't kind of muddle each other up. So one thing I think I can do to actually prevent muddiness, let's see. I can, hmm, I think I should take the lowest notes of the piano and raise them up an octave because I'm a little worried about that low end clash. Let's see if that messes it up. This should be down. Let's see, what can we do with this? We can't put it down an octave. Um, let's use a different note here. No, that sounds bad. Um, let's see. Well, okay, if the A is working, maybe we could do this. We're hearing bum ba da 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 da. This way it's bum ba da da. That lays out more of a melody in the bass. I think that's better. Before we had just two A's in a row from this cello and this piano. And I feel like if we really had that in real life, it would just kind of get lost. It's not like it would be like something you hear and you're like, oh my god, that's obviously bad. But rather what happens is I don't think it helps the texture. And anything that doesn't actually help the texture is waste, and that will end up ruining the momentum of the piece. The thing is that if you can look at something and say, oh, I don't really think that does anything, then it's actually bad. It's not neutral. You would think, oh, well, it's not doing anything, so it just doesn't matter. 
but it's not actually neutral. Things that don't do anything just cause clutter and confusion, and therefore you you end up in a position where your piece is suffering in a very subtle way that builds up over time. Uh, so just get rid of anything that doesn't do anything. If there's something you're hearing and you're like, oh, that doesn't really actually make any difference in my ear, it probably is a waste. All right, so finishing out that piano, so yeah. I feel like we need to break the pattern here. So we've got I think this would be a good place for a run. Double the crotales right here in the left hand. Have this hold for a half note. And hello, Mr. Left, or right hand, I mean. The right hand pops in to say hi. Let's see. Hmm. That's neat. I like that. We've got a nice section going. This is a very... It's it's nice. Um, I'm worried in real life that the piano is going to get lost a little bit. Um, like we might want to put these as octaves so it's like this might be good I think this is good. Uh, so what I'm doing is I'm making it so that the piano notes stand out a little more by having these higher octaves happen before the bass notes. Um, I think that'll take your ear into the notes and then you'll be taken away again. Your focus will be taken away again by the strings. But this way there's some sort of like solid uh, noticeability to the piano and it doesn't end up being lost uh, as much. I'm, I'm hoping. Sometimes when you actually sit down to play with people, it's all messed up. So. I don't think this accomplishes enough right here. I think it's waste. It has to go up an octave, I think, if it's going to be useful. No, still not useful enough. It doesn't stand out in any way. It's not really adding. Uh, I feel like there could be something better right here. I'm just gonna leave it empty for now. Yeah, I think I know what it needs. This has to just keep going. This might be an interesting thing if I mimic the crotales here. Let's see what happens. I 
Hmm. Let's see, what if I... Put that up to here. Getting there. That's cool. That's cool. I want to mimic this movement now in the cello. It's like a call and response. So it's like. I like what this is doing to the harmony. Ah. Yeah. All right. All right. Making progress. So, what does this section mean to me? That's the question right now. What is the story? What is unfolding? What am I making of this? Where is my piece? This is when we start to get really artsy. And by artsy, I really mean we think in these more abstract terms, and it's harder to kind of imagine a computer algorithm matching the kind of thought I'm having now. I'm sure it's possible for AI to someday think this way, but this is definitely like the most human thinking part of the process that's hard to explain is when you're just saying, well, what is this piece even, what mood am I getting here and how can I take that into the next section and the next section and the next section? Just that melody in here. Um... Well, that's going to be a big surprise. Um... <laughs> okay, that chord might not work anymore. We'll find out. We'll find out. Let's not bail on that. Um, let's see. I'm just going to throw this in here real quick. Temporary. Temporary measure. Interesting. Well, it's not crap. It's a little heavy handed, but well, that used to be my nickname in middle school Ben Heavy Hand Levin because of some reason, uh, some joke I can't think of. I'm sorry. Shouldn't even start a joke if you're not going to end it. Ben Heavy Hands Levin because my hands were so full of clay. All right, so we got, let's get this chord in there and, and see what we can do with it. I feel like it's such a big step. 
we got to get this happening in this new chord. So, uh, well, we got that C. Sounds a bit. This is trippy. What do we have going on? Let's see what happens if I pull one of these. Uh, I'm gonna stick the thing that happens right before the weird spot. I'm gonna take that thing and put it after the weird spot as much as I can so that we create a sense that we are just shifting the balance for a moment but then resolving very quickly and see if that shift starts to feel right. needs to be we need to run again is what we need we need more more sixteenths in the uh, piano I think people to see normally it's just me struggling my butt off but we all do it don't we all right so struggling that butt 
That's interesting, isn't it? <laughs> Is there an F natural in this chord? Is there a reason why I really shouldn't? Ah, too conservative. say it's working out this is definitely interesting it's definitely something I normally wouldn't write we need balance we've got this then this so we got this happening 16th and this happening, the momentum is increasing. We have a half note, then we have two quarter notes. The speed is increasing. Now we've got a whole measure of sixteenths, and we got this moment here. Okay, okay. What I'm trying to do is make it not sound like we just pasted in this weird chord just to be fancy. I want the weird chord to push this music forward. I want it to create momentum. I want it to feel exciting and feel special and not just disoriented. <laughs> I think we're on the right track. Um, why not just erase this chord, you might wonder. It's because I normally wouldn't keep it. If I erase it, I'll do what I always do when I write music. But if I keep it, I might figure something new out. Alright, so I think what, what would really help is if the melody weren't so different from here to here. It goes na 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 I think what we want to do instead is go ma 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 taking this little bit of the melody and stretching it through the 
change so that you have the, con the, the thread sewn through this whole moment. You create that continuity by having this one thing that really doesn't change. And that is what I was trying to do with these 16th notes. The 16th are just too much. It's too much. So right here is where I, my, as they say, my pee pee go down. That's right where it gets too, uh, it's gross. Na -na -na. It's not quite working. by doubling this melody and making cool chords. Yay. All right. Let's hear it. Yeah. 
Okay, so it's kind of muddy. There's a lot going on. So my goal next time, I'm going to write this down so I remember. To make the B section much simpler. Add a stripped down intro to the A section. I think that will really help because just starting with all that madness um, I think it'll be much more coherent if I have something that reflects the material that's a little simpler happening before it so that your ear can latch on to the basic ideas and then hear them grow into a beautiful flower. So I will uh, continue with the arrangement and miscellaneous next time.